majority of single women, their picker is broken. Mm -hmm. And it's based on their past traumas or in opposition to their past traumas. So they continue to choose what they don't want or they choose the total opposite, which they don't want either. And they end up with something which is just settling. Talking about the problem, here's the problem, that you think that you're doing something by going to the grocery store once every two weeks and you expect it to meet your husband this century. Like, ma'am, this is just not going to work out. What I find is that so often we are afraid of rejection and we're afraid of judgment. And at some point in our life, if we sit down and pinpoint those Somebody that showed us what we felt or what we said didn't matter. Hey, family, welcome to another episode of The Love Lens, changing your view on love one episode at a time. I'm Coach Cass, America's go-to love doctor, the founder of The Real Love Network and the creator of The Love Deck. Love Deck, 60 questions to ask before choosing the one. So today, I wanna make sure that you subscribe and hit notifications. I do not want you to miss because every single Sunday, we're coming to you, bringing you a brand new episode. You could even binge watch our past episodes Don't miss out. We talked about the art of dating multiple men. We talked about how do you build a multi-million business with your spouse? How do you choose a husband? There's so many good episodes here. What are men really expecting in a relationship? There's so many good episodes so far that we've done that you got to go back to the beginning and just binge watch all of them. Go ahead and comment underneath them because I'm going to respond. I want to hear what you want to hear. I want to know what you're dealing with. I want to know If this podcast is helping you, okay, share it with a friend and I'll see you soon. So right now, right now, we're going to talk about something that I get a lot of questions on, small talk and socializing. If you're a person that absolutely hates small talk, whether you're an extrovert or introvert, go ahead and drop a me in the chat. Okay, so we got a we got a letter. Mm, I'm so excited. And you guys can write us letters to Dear Coach Cass. I'm here for it. You can send it on social media. I'm at Inspire Many. You can send me an email, coach at inspiremany.com. Okay. So, all right, dear Coach Cass, I've been a faithful listener of your podcast and find your episodes incredibly insightful and empowering. I'm writing to you today because I'm facing a challenge that I believe many of your listeners might relate to. I have a real dread of small talk and socializing. Every time I find myself in a social setting, be it a professional networking event or a casual get together with acquaintances, I feel an overwhelming anxiety. The idea of initiating conversation with strangers or even maintaining dialogue beyond a simple hello makes me extremely uncomfortable. I often find myself standing alone, clutching my drink and watching the clock until it's acceptable to leave. My biggest fear is running out of things to say or that conversation will stall into awkward silence. This fear keeps me from attending many events, which I know is not helping my career, or personal dating life. I understand the importance of networking and making connections, but I just don't know how to get past this mental block to be able to really find love. I would greatly appreciate any advice you would you could share on how to tackle these situations. Are there strategies I can use to become more comfortable with small talk? How can I turn these daunting social interactions into opportunities for genuine connections? Thanks for considering my question, and I look forward to possibly hearing your thoughts on an upcoming episode. Warm regards, Susie in New York. All right, bet. Okay, bet, Susie. Listen, that was a mouthful. (laughs) So, you know, one of the biggest things that I see a problem with is we allow fear to take us out. And I'm, I know for a fact, because we just did a whole class on how to date as an introvert, right? And if (laughs) If you want to be able to get your hands on that masterclass, go ahead and and email me, coach at inspiremany.com so we can get you the link for that, right? So when you start to think about going up to someone new, (laughs) going up to somebody new and having conversation Gil, like, how do you feel about that? Like, do you do you get a little nervous about 
going up to folks and, and talking to them? No, it's an adventure. It's like, ooh, I'm going to learn something new. Really? Yeah, I get to, I love it. I love, you love it? I love it. Well, that's why you're here. So <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you. So for me, um, even as every test says mm-hmm. I'm an extreme extrovert, I almost didn't go to a live event I wanted to go to because Andy couldn't go. So I realized that Andy is my crutch and he's the person I bring to be able to feed off of to be this extra extroverted, bubbly person because I kind of have a fallback. But if I'm going by myself and I really don't know anyone, I know exactly the fears that come up. It's like, oh, am I going to be accepted? Am I wearing the right thing? Will anybody talk to me? Will I make new friends? Will I gain new clients? Is this worth my time? Dang, that's a lot of money. Should I be spending this money on this? You know, so it's just like, oh, I got to put on eyelashes. Got to put on lipstick. I got to look cute. I can't look homeless. You know, it's just, (laughs) it's all of, all of the things that end up coming up in my mind. So now for the extreme introvert, I can only imagine, right, how that comes up for you in, in dating and going to these events. Because one thing I know is that many people like, well, Coach Cass, you know, I do not do the online. Okay. I'm going to go outside. I was talking to a client the other day and I said, right, so you don't do the dating online. You do the dating outside. Okay, so tell me about the outside. Well, you know, Coach Cass, um, I'm, you know, I've just been doing everything that I, I can. I said, all right, so what's everything you can? Well, I went to the grocery store. So, so the, for me, the dating outside, I feel like you're, you're, you're a prisoner of your city or your boundary, mm. whereas dating on an app, you're kind of open to multiple possibilities, mm-hmm. right? And you get mm-hmm. to see the person, what their interests are. You can see photos, see their profiles. Whereas the grocery store, you see the gentleman just so happened to be wearing Crocs. Right. Maybe he just wanted to get some a leave because he had a headache. Now you're judging him by his appearance. But with the dating app, you see his profile picture, his interests, his degrees, everything. Mm-hmm. So I feel like the dating apps win. You get, you get options. Yeah. You definitely have options. And there's essentially small talk on both, Mm -hmm. right? So for the guy in the grocery store, and we're going to go through some practical type of stuff, right, ladies? But I I just just talking about the problem, here's the problem, that you think that you're doing something by going to the grocery store once every two weeks. And for (laughs) this specific client, she had only gone to the grocery store for 20 minutes each time. So I'm like, okay, 40 minutes in the span of two weeks, and you expected to meet your husband this century? Like, ma'am. This is just not going to work out. And people say, oh, well, Coach Cass, you know, you should just let it come to you. I, I think I posted on Instagram this lady that was like, oh, yeah, look for your husband when you're not looking. You find your husband when you're not looking. So she's walking around with her hand over her eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was the funniest clip ever, right? It's just like, okay, I'm going to find him. I'm going to find him. You know, like, it, that is not the majority mm-hmm. of us. Like, there has to be some intention. I don't want osmosis dating. I don't want an osmosis husband. I want a very intentional husband in this process, mm-hmm. right? We have to be open. So when we talk about small talk and, and just all the things, and I have, I have notes, social situations where you don't know anyone. So let's say you go into a conference, you go into, because there was another viral social media post about a lady that's like, Come to the conferences. You know, that's where all the men are. I'm yeah. like, you could still leave single from a conference because yeah. you don't talk to anybody or you stay in your room the whole time, right? So let's let's try out conferences, right, Gil? So you go to a conference. So Gil, tell me a little bit of what you do at a conference. Now I know you're a married man, but you mm-hmm. know, when you're when you're networking and talking to people, what's a little bit of what you do when I go? So for me, I love small talk, but mm-hmm. I'm also kind of afraid. So I create scenarios where I have a camera on my neck. But not just a camera, the strap might have some pattern to it. Mm -hmm. I might wear a lens cap with maybe my Haitian flags on there. So I'm creating conversations. I might be wearing an outfit where it's a little bit different. Oh, that's a nice shirt. And now I have this ability to speak to someone. So I I create the opportunity for someone maybe to speak first or I create an opportunity for a conversation to be birth instead of just me walking up and saying, well, I'm here. I paid this hundred dollars for this con- for this convention. No, but how are you coming to the convention? Right. Are you having the energy or the mentality of someone talking to you? How's your face? Mm-hmm. Did you get a haircut? You know, like <laughs> what are you? 
What is there about you that someone would like to have a conversation with you with? Oh, that's good. That's good, right? So so you, most conferences I know of are costing $1,000 now mm-hmm. to attend a conference. So now you spend all this money to go to this conference and you're there. And I like that, right? You you wear something that makes you stand out, Yes. right? So you're here and you're standing out versus blending in. So if you're in a sorority to maybe wear your sorority colors, maybe wear your, if you went to a HBCU, wear those colors. Maybe if you have a pin of a certain organization, wear that pin. Yeah. You know, like what are the things that are immediate points of connection, right? Because when you have immediate points of connection, I really do think that that helps you bridge a greater gap in yeah. conversation. Yeah. Yeah. So when we start to think about connection points, so we got the outfits on lock, but now actually going up to someone or walking up to someone to have conversation. I know that some women would rather die. They're like, you know what, Coach Cass, I I just, <laughs> I can't, I can't do it, right? Yeah. I can't do it. And so I think for me, you're looking for the opening. Are you someone that goes to all the conferences? You know, you get your CUs for your job. You're always up leveling in personal development. I'm going to tell you one thing. You need your CEUs in love. Join me for Wanted Woman Live, the ultimate non-conference, unconference experience, three days in sunny South Florida this fall. This is an experience where women come together from all over the country to be able to be poured into all around love. How do you show up in love? How do you receive love? How do you just have fun with love? Join the sisterhood, an amazing experience created and curated just for you, the professional woman that desires Moy. Click the link below, wantedwomanlive.com. So if you see a group of people and they're all closed in, leave that section alone. But if there's one person standing by themselves or three people kind of open and they have an open way, insert yourself and say, hi, you know, you guys, is this your first time here? Right. What did you think about and insert the speaker? Make it about the conference. Mm -hmm. Do something different. And this is for men and for women. I want you to to start to kind of practice with women and then edge over to men. Right. Because you living in a shell is not helping anybody. Yeah. Yeah. You know, one thing I, I go to conventions a lot and it's this is an easy conversation that women say to me. Hey, do you have a phone charger? Oh, that right there is, oh, it's iPhone or Android. Oh, mm. what type of person you are? Oh, I have this. Hey, one second. Oh, wow. That's a nice camera. What type of camera that is? Now she's asking two or three different questions mm-hmm. from an iPhone charger. Yes. But it's really about the t- intentionality. She's really trying to see what type of person you are. Are you ready? Are you prepared? And that right there, you could tell a lot about a person. Oh, that's good. Come on, y'all. Yeah. Come on. All right, so so do you have a phone charger? So if you see a fine man at somebody's <laughs> conference, y'all, okay, yep. we could start with, do you have a phone charger? <laughs> yeah, that's the conversation. Oh, that is a phone. Vo- oh, you team iPhone, huh? Mm. You team Android. Mm. Yep. You know, everybody gets a, mm. <laughs> Yep, exactly. <laughs> and then there's a banter and a comedy to it. Ooh, I'm loving that. Come on, come through. Come through. Come through. Okay, so here's some other things, right? So preparation is key. Preparing with some conversation starters. What are some things that matter to you, right? So <sighs> politics is a very testy subject. Are there some other things that mat- matter to you? So if you're at the National Black MBA something, or if you're at the mom uh, and dad something, if you're at the after school soccer match, if you're at the ladies who brunch, but the men who love them, you know, like whatever you're at, right? What is some common ground things that you could just think of beforehand to bring up, right? Mm-hmm. Just simple, just simple things. I feel like you had something. Yeah, I did. Uh, it just really depends on what, what the convention is. Mm-hmm. Like for me, I go to a lot of content creator conventions. What's your podcast about? Right. If we're going to a podcast convention, if we're doing a content creator retreat, mm-hmm. hey, what platforms are you on? Hey, I'll mm-hmm. follow you. Oh, mm-hmm. I saw that you do hiking. I hike too. I do indoor this and that. And there's so many different, so many different ways you can like start a conversation, but I feel like you have to know the conference that you're at, mm-hmm. speak to that person, bring up the conference, use that as an easy gateway. And that's yeah. pretty much it. Let the place 
be the subject and not you. And then slowly but surely we can get into you and that other person. Yeah. 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 I like it. I like it. Okay. So, so here we are and we, okay. So we're preparing. We got some things that we love. So you like hiking, you like baking, you like cooking and you know, everybody likes to eat. So it's just like, Hey, do you put sugar in your grits or no? You know, like, you know, that's a, that's a whole thing, you Mm -hmm. know? So whatever fun things that you want to have just in your pocket, just to be fun. Yeah. We're not here looking for husbands. We are here looking for connections. I think that's the biggest thing yes, in the dread of the small talk. It's like, don't put pressure on, I must get a client from this conversation. I must get a husband from this conversation. It's like, no, I'm just practicing my communication skills. Yeah. And that's it. Mm-hmm. Active listening. <laughs> so active listening is key. If you're not listening to the person speaking, why are you talking to them? Yeah. Right? He's so caught up in, oh, is my dress looking funny? Is my hair weird? Do I have something in my teeth? You know, we're so concerned with what's going on with us that we forget to have that person feel heard. So active listening makes a huge difference in your connection to get past the small talk, get past the weather, have your, have, have your things ready to ask. But, you know, you could use the love deck. But outside of that, you want to start to think of like, did I listen? Mm-hmm. Was I doing something else? Yeah. Was I just on my phone? Then why did I even insert myself into this conversation? And if you find yourself that the person is droning on and on and you want to get out of the, the conversation, say, oh, I got to take this. Yeah. Right? Oop. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> got to go. And you don't have to come back. No. There is no um, law mm-hmm. that says you have to reinsert yourself in a conversation. Yeah. Active listening for me is I use this rule a lot. If I do, if I don't, if I'm not interested, I do the whole phone thing. Hey, one second, my wife got my wife is calling me. <laughs> I use my wife for any excuse. <laughs> but if I'm not interested, I'll walk away. And that's for clients, that's for friends, that's for family. My mom, my dad. Hey, my wife is calling me. I gotta go. Gotta go. Yeah. Oh, so talk about that, right? So I was on the phone with my mom today, and you know, every time I talk to my mom, she has three or four requests in a row, mm-hmm. right? can you do this? And then can you do this? And then can you do this? And I'm like, Ma, I gotta go. Mm-hmm. And she's like, oh, where are you going? I was like, I got a lot going on today. And these are too many requests from my brain. She's like, oh, can we keep talking if I don't make it a request? I'm like, are you able to do that? Mm-hmm. She's like, I can try. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought that was just so beautiful, yeah. right? For her to say, I can try. But one, it was me setting a boundary and then voicing why I was setting the boundary. And then four, her actually listening mm. and saying, well, I'll try to work on that. Yeah. It was, it, for me, that was a breakthrough moment with me and my mom. Yeah. It was beautiful. But how often do we do that? Yeah, it's not often, especially with island parents. You know, <laughs> it's, it's very tough. But um, I try to do that with my mom. Hey, I, I, since you're coming down to Fort Lauderdale, stop by here and pick up this to drop this off to this person. And yeah, I'll do it. But there are a lot of times where I have to listen to myself and say, well, Gil, I'm tired. Mm-hmm. And I have to have my mom listen to me and say, hey, mom, I don't think I'll be able to. Yeah. yeah. That part. Yeah. That's why sometimes I sneak out the country before I have to bring like a nine bags or something to Jamaica. Like yeah. we're, not, we're not doing all that. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> we're, not, we're not doing all that. Okay, keep moving. Three. Okay, I already said it. Finding common ground offers strategies. So so really finding the the topics that you want to talk about, the things that you're interested in and and bring them to the table. So for me, I like travel, right? Mm-hmm. So we're taking the ladies to Antigua next year. We're going to Bali. Mm-hmm. We're going to South Florida for Wanted Woman Live. There's so many great things that we have coming up. I have no problem talking about those things. Yeah. We just bought a house. Ava has a pool. Do they know anything about pools? You know, yeah. and we could talk all about pools. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know nothing. We yeah. just had termites. Do I know anything about termites? I hate the termites. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, for me, it's I always, of course, I'm always accepting of the things that I'm interested in. Yeah. But I also welcome the things that I'm not. Mm. It's like, oh, well, you're Indian. I don't know anything about Indian culture. I'll talk to this Indian person, mm-hmm. you know, or this person is this thing. This person is a cinematographer, not a mm-hmm. photographer. Mm-hmm. Tell me everything about that. And now we could basically do a Venn diagram of all the things we have similar and bring them together. And that's beautiful. Hmm. 
Who would you like to bring a Venn diagram together with? Ooh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay. And last but not least is uh, but body language, right? So body language is important. So let's say you're talking to someone, right, ladies, and they're sitting to this side of you. You want to make sure that you're turning towards them, right? You're turning towards them and you're spending the time to be present. But the body language, you're mirroring where they are and what they're doing and how they're doing it, right? So you're spending the time to say, okay, I see you, I hear you. What about this? What about that? And if you find yourself no longer interested, you could very simply show so in your body language. Now, some of you are still saying, but Coach Cass, I'm still really scared of talking to people. So then we need to go deeper. What I find, right, Gil, is that so often, we are afraid of rejection and we're afraid of judgment. And at some point in our life, if we sit down and pinpoint, there was somebody that showed us what we felt or what we said didn't matter. And it has taken me my whole life to get to a point where I'll speak up for what I want or tell you no if I don't. My husband says it like this. He said, Cass, you are not a people pleaser. Because the other day I was like, oh, babe, am I a people pleaser? He was like, no. <laughs> oh, I was like, well, well, damn. You know, yeah. like, why are you saying it like that though, right? And he said, this is the moment that I knew you were not a people pleaser. When we had Wanted Woman Live last year, um, on the first morning, we didn't do the group huddle with the prayer that I wanted to do. They decided to open registration early to serve the clients downstairs instead of coming upstairs for the quick huddle. And I was alone and I was stressed and I didn't I hadn't met all of the volunteers yet. So it's like I felt on the first day that I didn't know anyone and I felt like an outsider at my own event. Hmm. It's just like how do you do that? Yeah. <laughs> how do you feel like an outsider at your own event? And so the second morning I mandated that they all came up and I said, "Hey guys, just so you know, I felt alone yesterday because we didn't do this. And Andy was just so baffled that I shared that. And I was like, but if I didn't share that, it would have sat with me mm -hmm. for life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I need y'all to know how important this is. We, this is our last one. It's a, it's a two and a half day event. Third day, we didn't need to do that. But it's just like, this is important to me. Mm. And I'm so grateful that you're here. But he, he was profoundly surprised that I really shared my disappointment from the day before. And I'm just like, well, you got to, yeah. you know? And, and for me, that's a huge stride and a big deal that I stepped forward with that in finding my voice, even though I could have started an argument, it could have been excuse central, the rejection, the judgment, the, all the things, all the things that we think about when we're starting to do this thing called small talk. So was that the first time really speaking up for yourself in that way? In that way, I yeah. would say that that was a very big deal, right? Yeah. So this is my hotel room with like 15 people in it mm. and I don't really know everyone, yeah. right? So for me to be like, well, hello. Mm. For me, I, I feel like that's, that's scary. I was getting mm. anxiety thinking about that. Yeah. For me, I'll be able to speak like that to my friends and family, but people that you don't necessarily know who are working with you, that's tough. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. Yeah. It wasn't simple. Yeah. But the more and more I learn about finding your voice and showing up authentically as yourself, it's less about small talk and it's more about just speaking passionately about what you love and finding your tribe to do that with. So if it doesn't gel in a conversation, then this is just not my person. This is just not my tribe. This is just not my people. So I'm starting to really understand that God has an assignment for each and every one of us of who should be in our life. And it's just up to us to connect with that person or those people. So when going to an event, even if you meet one person and that's one cool person, that's one cool person. If you didn't meet anyone, you still got the information from the stage, right? It's just being able to get out of my head, which is still a daily process mm -hmm. of, so what if they reject me, right? I remember being in high school 
and trying out for the dance team. Thought I was doing it, (laughs) right? I tried out for the dance team two years in a row and I didn't meet the team. I wasn't a popular kid in high school. I was not. I hated high school. People were mean. The very people that you thought would have your back, you know, the people that looked like me, the people that were like me, the people Caribbean like me, it was all mean. Mm. You know what I mean? I didn't really have friends like that. And, you know, that was a place of rejection and insecurity and being an outsider. And I really can say that, wow, you know, looking at my life, I really think that's why I started this movement of being a wanted woman because of my own hurt, of my own trauma, of my own stuff, that I want women to realize that they were born wanted. Nobody has to call you and say you're wanted. Nobody has to love you for you to be wanted. It's like you were born wanted. And I feel that in every vibe of my body, but it took a long time to get there. And it's still an emotional roller coaster depending on the day because there's always little moments where you just kind of feel left out and you feel like that little girl that was on the playground that nobody called in to play the game or you were the last one chosen on the dodgeball team or you didn't get make the dance team or the popular club with the jackets, right? There was all these different iterations of rejection. And so we show up in our lives a little timid because we don't want to face that feeling again. But if we don't face the feeling, how will we ever really feel new feelings Mm -hmm. of love, joy, accomplishment, and fullness? So would you say that doing small talk with strangers is like a warm-up in a way to Mm -hmm. like being true to and authentically listening to your voice? Yeah, Yeah, it's practice. It's practice. If we start looking at so many aspects of dating and what it does, it's practice to us being better at work, being better with our families, being better with strangers, being better with our romantic partners, being better with everyone. If we just flipped it on its head, because so many times we think of dating as, oh gosh, (laughs) I don't know if I can do this. Oh, what are they going to think? What am I going to say? Uh, Right? We go crazy Mm -hmm. thinking about what imaginary person is thinking about us. But instead, if we showed up boldly with who we are, no matter our size, our shape, our color, Mm -hmm. our hue, our educational background, our economic status, no matter any of those, what could that be like? Listen, have you ever struggled when it comes to conversations on dates, maybe a first date or even your 50th date? One thing I know is that we need to have more meaningful conversations. And that's why I created The Love Deck, 60 questions to ask before choosing the one, but really to deepen your conversations. So whether it's with that guy that you're dating or with your mom or your close girlfriends, what I know is we got to speak more to the heart of our people. Grab your love deck today. It's a great gift for others. And you could get it right now in our Amazon store. Pick up yours. One side is affirmations. The other side is dating conversations. Get yours today. Pick up the love deck. Be a force to be reckoned with and not a cocky one, but one in which your confidence is like, I got this. I know what I'm talking about because I'm creating the narrative. Yep. If I feel like talking about Creating amazing communities that you support, I could do that, right? If you want me to talk about Rubik's Cubes, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Right? If you want me to talk about spicy Thai chicken wings in the air fryer, I could talk about that. Mm -hmm. If you want me to talk about making shepherd's pie, I don't know. I I, I know it's like meat and potatoes and it's real simple, but I've never actually tried. Right? So it's, it's just like there's certain things. Like, for instance, okay, let's talk about cooking. Hallelujah. I'm Jamaican. So, you know, oh, you need to be able to cook this, this, cook, eh, Mm -hmm. recipe, book, Mm -hmm. right? So you need to be able to cook all these things. Why? (laughs) Who made the rule that I needed to cook all these things? Aren't there good people in business that I can support? Don't I have good relatives that love doing this? You know, like, it's it's just the, the shoulds that hurt my spirit. And I face the shoulds every day. You know mm-hmm. what you should be doing? You should be having another baby. 
You know what you should be doing? You should be keeping a good house, a clean house, right? You should be cooking for your husband. You should be rubbing his feet. Not to say I don't do all those things, but it's just like the shoulds just drive me crazy. I'm a little bit of a rebel, Mm -hmm. right, Gil? Yeah, me too. Just just, just a little bit of rebel. When you start saying shoulds, everybody going to be hungry. Right, so... (laughs) Oh, that's what I'm the supposed to be doing. Stomach gonna be start saying should should you know <laughs> better get a snack you know yeah. so so for me I think I think I like operating on my own should mm-hmm. and not listening to what society says. Yeah. So for some of us, we get a little overwhelmed of the shoulds in dating, and I start to ask you to say, well, what do you want, sis? What do you desire? Yeah. And if love is a part of that desire, I want you to be honest. Are you really doing anything consistently Mm -hmm. to connect with love outside of prayer and staying in your house and wondering if Jesus is going to just drop him in from the ceiling? Like You coming on a helicopter pad? You can't fit on my roof. You know, (laughs) like all, all the shoulds, all of the things that as far as like doing things for other people, pleasing other people. It doesn't do anything for you. Mm -hmm. And what ends up resulting is you end up becoming a woman or a man, depending on the situation, who is built for somebody else, but not yourself. And you end up becoming married, unhappy, resentful of these mistakes because you listen to all the shoulds and everything you should be doing, except for listening to your heart, listening to God's voice about what you actually should be doing. So in dating and doing everything that it is, small talk, It's actually building up the character you are. It's building the coach cast. Yeah. And then you ultimately become. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not finished. I'm I'm not a finished product. Mm -hmm. I'm always going. I'm I'm a lifelong learner, Gil. And I'm I'm very proud to say that. Like I I'm I'm not gonna stop because I understand that there's always something to help me get to the next level in how I operate and how I communicate and how I make money, and how I date my husband, and how I parent, you know, and all of it. Listen, I've even hired someone to to tell me what colors look good on me. So it's good you, blue. Okay. <laughs> yeah. The blue is blueing. Yeah. Okay. And and this is because I have a color palette, and literally I pinpoint about three or four colors that I rock with. Mm. And the rest of them, I just don't really do it. Yeah. But it works for me. Mm-hmm. And I like it. So I'm going to do it. Yeah. Me and lime green, we don't we don't really connect like yeah. that. You know, I'm already high yellow. Yeah. I'm Jamaican. I do like lime green, but it doesn't belong by my face. So we learn different things when you open your eyes to different professionals and getting the help, knowing that I don't know everything. Yeah. So something that I do um, recommend that people do who have a hard time with small talk is take up improv. Mm. And I have an amazing person that does improv. I'm going to drop the link down in the captions and the show notes and all that good stuff. But um, taking improv helps you to get out of your head, right? Being able for you to share something. You know what? Just share something. Share share anything. I really like biking. Yes. Yes. And I love biking too. You know what? I used to ride a bike when I was little. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Have you ever fallen off your bike? No, I haven't. Yes. Yes. And I have fallen off my bike and I ended up scraping my knee Mm -hmm. and I still got back on my bike. And you still kept riding. That's it. Yes. And I kept riding. So that's like a simple improv thing is to do yes and Mm -hmm. right so whatever the person says you say yes and and you kind of add on to it it kind of makes it like into a fun game like wait not no yes yes and keeping it in a positive light if i I want anyone listening to this episode to just take out a timer the next time you start talking to somebody and see how long it takes them to go negative in the conversation most of our conversations end up in this negative light complaining about whatever, right? Complaining that this didn't happen, that didn't happen, this didn't happen. It was, it's just, it's just too mosh. Mm -hmm. It's too mosh, right? So for me, my husband is one of the most positive people I know. But in this house process, you know, when hiring different professionals, they didn't necessarily do it up to his standard. So my husband can complain just a little bit, right? And it could drive me crazy because it's just like, it's done. It's over. It's done. We don't have to use them again, you know? but 
A part of him has to get it out over and over and over again to where I'm like, all right, I'm done. I am no longer your <laughs> yeah. person yeah. for this complaint. Call a friend. Phone a friend. <laughs> Where's the, what's it? Who wants to be a millionaire? Who wants to be a millionaire? Yeah, exactly. Let me, <laughs> let me find a friend to call yeah. because this is not it. But it takes some time to get there. Mm-hmm. Right? So in our small talk, yes and, how can we take it in a positive light? I'm telling you right now, most men, and you tell me if I'm wrong, Gil, are attractive, attracted to a positive light, positive conversation, something in where you're enriching them or highlighting something great or giving a compliment. What you yeah. saying? I, I say that as women and men. Mm. We loved that person who is, oh, that person was positive. Mm-hmm. Oh, Katrina, every time I talk to Katrina, she just makes me feel good. And and it's not like she's, I'm draining her. It's just mm-hmm. that she's just a bubbly person mm-hmm. and anything could like fall on her shoulder. She's like, oh, just scrape it right off. Yeah, it's all about positivity. Um, and I think with small talk, it's, Let's have a small talk conversation that leads to a good place. Yeah. I don't think anybody loves a small talk. Whereas, yeah, this hurricane season. Oh, gosh. You know, I remember the last hurricane. It was pretty bad. Do you have hurricane shoulders? Oh, my insurance went up. That's not a good right. small talk. No. I don't want to. Let's I don't not want, go there. Let's I'm not going go down. there. It's going, going down. down. <laughs> you know, so it's for small talk would be, hey, what, what was your childhood like growing up? What school did you go to? Oh, I went to that school. We had the best field trips. Oh, did you go there too? Oh, my gosh. I went to that field trip. I go there as an adult now to you know enjoy coffee, whatever the case is. And I remember the good old days. Yeah. That's great, you know. Yeah. So for me, small talk is always you have to have the you have to pretty much make sure that you bring into the conversation to a positive light, mm-hmm. not anything negative. We are dealing with a lot of toxic stuff every single day: yeah. termites, homes, mortgages, HOA, like all the things. It's, it's all the things. Yeah, yeah. So you literally have to put the effort for it. Mm-hmm. To be positive. Yes. To have great conversations. So now let's move over to actual dates and small talk. So that's where the love deck comes into play, right? So here's the love deck, 60 questions to ask before choosing the one. It actually is also for just more meaningful conversations. I've used it with my mom, used it with my family. I've used it with friends. Found out things about my best friend. I didn't even know. I I, mm-hmm. I didn't even know. And yeah. we've been best friends for about 30 years. You know, yeah. I'm like, wait a second. I didn't know all yeah. this. Right? So... I think having a deck of cards like this, and and many of our clients bring them on dates. I had one that recently messaged me saying she got engaged and she used a love deck on her first date. And I had another friend of mine who used the deck with her now husband. And he said, listen, those questions helped me to identify that she was my wife. I was just like, wow. Okay. All right, love deck. That's that's nice. You know what I'm saying? That's Mm -hmm. real nice. So when we start to think about, when we start to think about the questions we ask and you want to skip the small talk, you have to figure out what's important to you before the date. Okay, what are the things that are super important to me? Family, travel, God. Yeah. Maybe that's it. Maybe, yeah. maybe that's, that's it, right? Mm-hmm. So it's just like, oh, okay, so... You know, what do you normally do on a Sunday morning? Oh, well, you know, I golf. Oh, okay, you golf. That's all you do on Sundays? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. That's it, yeah. right? Like, okay, well, that ain't going to work for me My the way I do Jesus. Because some people do Jesus different. Mm-hmm. I go to church on Sunday. And that's important to me. And what I was looking for was someone who went to church on his own and I didn't have to drag him there, yeah. right? I don't have to convince you to give up your golf to come to church with me. No, yeah. we're good. Then it's like, okay, the travel. Oh, well, you know, I work all the time. Andy was a workaholic. He's still a workaholic. <laughs> yeah. I still drag him on every trip we go on. But guess what? He still goes, yeah. right? And during our dating, he would go on like maybe one guy's trip a year. So at least he, he did a little travel. Mm-hmm. But then I opened up his world to say, you know, you could fly a place more often. Listen, he was just in Atlanta for the day yesterday. Something he would never fathom. You know, like, yeah. what? Get on yeah. a plane for a day and come right back? Like, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be a big thing. You know, all the limiting beliefs. So he was open, right, to being able. Okay, now when it comes to family, my mom and my grandma, they come and visit. And he continuously tells me, like, you married the right one because I'm used to family. Some men couldn't couldn't really rock with yeah. that, you know? And I'm like, I'm grateful for you. But I was very wise in my choosing 
to make sure we were aligned where it mattered to me. So for those who are listening, I want you to start to think about, okay, and using the love deck, I also want want you to write down like, what are the things that are super important to you? And how do you start to create scenarios or ask questions that are not interrogative, interrogative, interrogative? Well, you just questioning the man, right? Mm-hmm, yeah. <laughs> like have a conversation, have a conversation about these things and without giving feedback as to why it's wrong or not. You're just trying to see who this person is. Because I tell you, I dated a guy while I was in my master's program. The master's? Yeah, I was in my master's program because I had an office and I was working at the wellness center, right? So I was the health ed- senior health educator at the uh, FIU Wellness Center. And I had my own big office, big desk, big things, right? And so big woman on campus, right? And um, I was dating this guy. And when I first met him, he would wear like shorts, like torn up shorts and shirt that he never ironed and all that. And I remember commenting on what he would wear around campus and things. And he's like, oh. And after that, like little by little, he'd wear well-tailored pants and a nice Button down shirt and like he always looked dapper, always looked cute. He was super duper sweet. And I remember that we broke up, right? And he came to my office the day after and he was back in his torn up shorts and his holy t shirt in my office saying, This is who I am. And it was one of the scariest moments for me. Because I never want to change anyone that I'm dating. I only want to compliment them. So from that point on, I made sure to never desire to change who I was dating. Mm -hmm. But just observe and accept them for who they are. And if this wasn't it, there was always the option to go out the door. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, And you discover that with the, the small talk. What do you like to wear? Oh, I feel comfortable in this. Oh, you do? Thanks for letting me know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. If that's what you're wearing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Even the traveling. Okay. Where have you been? Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't have a passport. Noted. That's good to know. Right. Do you not want to travel? No, I don't desire to travel. I like living in America's. Good. Mm-hmm. Well, that's not the partner for me. Right. Yeah. It's real simple. Like, yeah. I'm not here to convince you. Yeah. Right. That you never want to go anywhere. But if you're open, mm-hmm. let's do this. Yeah. Right. And sometimes you have to take a trip by yourself. Mm-hmm. That's a whole nother podcast. All right. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So small talk on dating. So now we're, we're dating and socializing. And now, now we're on the date. We're having conversation. How do you really do this? The awkward silence. How do you avoid awkward silence? We talked about improv classes. We talked about yes and. So now I want us to talk about how do we really... Awkward silence isn't always awkward. And understand that. You see, I was just silent. Did you feel awkward? I didn't. It was a pause. We don't have to fill every single moment with words. You're eating, you're having fun, you see something, you saw a show, you saw the news. I don't really watch the news, but you know, what are things that come up? And if there's a low, it's okay. It doesn't mean that there isn't a connection just because you've been a little quiet. Pause. Be okay with the pause. If you pause on your date and there's silence there, you can always give a compliment. You could always thank them for this beautiful evening or afternoon. You could share how you're feeling in the moment. You could ask them how they feel about something or their opinion on something that's come up. Or you could just be silent. You don't always have to have an answer. You don't always have to have something to say. And I know a part of this is nerve-wracking because you're like, I don't know if I'm going to have what I need to say. Listen, (laughs) you're going to be all right. You're not going to die from silence. Might feel like it for the 30 seconds, (laughs) for the one minute. But it's okay. In the silence, there's a lot being said. For me, if silence is everything, if I can calmly just think, relax, not every second, like you said, has to be like filled with noise or conversation. 
Because what ends up happening is you end up just spewing garbage or just saying anything that comes to your mind. Sometimes it's n- nobody needs to hear that. So it's okay to just relax, reflect, and just chill. Like if you, if you can be around somebody and just chill and not say anything, I think that's your person. Not your person per se, but right. just a person you can chill and relax with. Right. Yeah. That's it. Can I, can I kick it? Yeah. Yes, you can. That's one of the, that's one of the things I tell my clients. You know, the thing you're looking for is can I kick it? That's it. Yes, you can. All right. So yeah. here we go. Yeah. Right. I could kick it with you. Mm-hmm. Me and Andy could be in the same house for a couple hours and I say a word, but just happy that they're there. Yeah. Right. We don't have to think so heavy. I find that we overthink things. I help some of my private clients like go through their dating profiles and just hear what comes up in their minds. And so often they're like, oh, why did he do that? Why did he do this? Why did I'm like, you are thinking too hard. It's yeah. too much thinking. Yeah. If if you don't like it, swipe away, keep going. Yeah. This is not the person. Mm-hmm. So when we start to get clear, when we start to have conversations that are more meaningful, when we look for commonalities, when we understand that I don't have to choose my husband at the end of this conversation or this event. Small talk becomes easier. Socializing becomes easier. So what else can we do? Very simply, if you have an event that you're going to, stop in front of a mirror. Take a look. Do you like what you see? Fix your shirt, fix your dress, fix your hair, and walk in head up confidently and say hello. You can always introduce yourself to the host to say, I don't know anyone here. Who should I know? Mm -hmm. You paid them to be there. So they definitely want you to have a good time. Oh, you should meet this person. You should meet that person. Okay, cool. But outside of that, what do we really need to do? Accept ourselves for who we are. Even if we're awkward. Even if we're strange, as long as you don't do it for a little change. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's awkward to some degree. Everybody yeah. has some type of thing that they don't like about themselves. A lot of people have uh, things that they, oh my gosh, I hope nobody notices this. Mm-hmm. That's everyone, men and women. Yeah. So once you understand that, I think you can then get into small talk a little bit more easier because mm-hmm. that gentleman is just as nervous as you are. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. It's the truth. So many times we forget that men are humans too. And they might just be as nervous as we are. Yeah. Mm. Chow? Yeah, I've, I've been to plenty of conventions where it's the gentleman with the too tight suit or the, the too smelly cologne. He smells like the whole like cologne department. Oh, yeah, And he's yeah, just yeah. thinking way too much. Or the guy who just does way too much speaking, too funny, too loud relax right but then on the opposite spectrum you have women who are quite literally doing the same and they don't realize that everybody's a little bit awkward we're a little bit nervous here because he's looking to meet someone she's also planning on meeting someone and they both don't know that they both are nervous Mm. and it's okay (laughs) it's okay yeah it really is no matter where you go and you can meet men anywhere now that is a whole nother podcast Mm -hmm. but literally You can meet men anywhere, no matter where you are. So it's not a certain event, because I know sometimes we feel like, oh, well, Coach Cass, give me the details on the venue. Hmm. Show me where he is. And I'm just going to say, you know, he could be anywhere. Essentially, for Andy, I initially, to our last recollection, we both have really bad memory, 2004, met at a conference with 14,000 people. He lived in Florida. We lost touch. We re-met at a friend's barbecue. Smaller venue, right? Smaller, more intimate situation. And it was because we both said yes to the invite. Mm. So how many times do we say, no, I'm busy. No, I'm tired. No, I can't. Yeah. Every time somebody invites you to something because you're a little bit scared Mm -hmm. of the awkwardness of, meeting new people, of not knowing everyone, all the things, the judgment, the fe- all the things. Yeah. But instead, what if you just said yes? Yeah. Because that yes to that friend's barbecue 
led me to my husband. Yeah. It really did. Mm-hmm. It's it's a so funny. Um, I have a friend of mine. She's a professional. She's a she's about thirty four. Homeowner owns two vehicles. Start she started her own programming business. Develop her own apps. But she's been historically single mm. and very nervous, very awkward. Yeah. And her friend said, "Hey, would you like to host a Halloween party?" I don't like people," she said. She's Jamaican. I don't like people, but you know, I'm going to try to open up my home. This is going to be my first house party, and her friend is pretty much hosting it. She met her boyfriend there, oh. and that's it's crazy because if she had said no, right, she'd probably still be looking. And now she's in a happy relationship Mm -hmm. because she said yes. Because she said yes. Where can we start to say yes to opportunities in our lives? For y'all, y'all listen, I want you to write a a, a line in the sand and put the word yes. And I want you to start to just notate. Every time you say yes, what door gets open? And I want you to share these doors with me as, Big doors open, small doors open. Feel free to message me wherever, right? And let me know how that's going. As you say yes, what good things are walking through the door? Now, I I don't want you to, your boundaries and toxic relationships and the foolishness. We're not saying yes to that. But in terms of simple invites like these, what could that be? Yeah. Yeah. I think that could be absolutely Mm life-changing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I met my wife, who is very awkward, very shy, at a church event. I used to be a youth leader at one of my churches, oh. and I had a game night. Mm-hmm. My wife said yes to coming out. And since then, we've been married and together for 15 years. Wow. Yeah. Because she decided to come to this event. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. Yes, come on. Yeah. But then you were also serving. I was also serving. Another place yes. to meet people, yes. right? Yep. Where you're serving, you're volunteering, you're giving back, doing something that you love. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you could just end up meeting love. Listen, when I was single, I was serving at my church too. Mm-hmm. And I was definitely looking around, you know? <laughs> I had my eye on a couple of people like, yeah. hmm, all right, sir, I see you here <laughs> serving. You know, I didn't make no moves. Yeah. But, you know, we were just serving together, serving the Lord. Mm -hmm. I I really was serving, but, you Mm -hmm. know, I still had my eyes open to see, you know, who else was showing up to the, to the group meetings and things. You know, we had a, we had a nice time, you know, it was (laughs) quite lovely. I had to look around a Mm -hmm. little bit. You had me thinking, I wonder where some of those people are. Hmm. We changed churches. This is what happens when you get married. You know, the husband, husband went to different churches. Say, all right, all right. Yeah, but church is where you can quite literally meet someone and see who they are. Because the church is where God gives us talents. As far as for me, I did computer uh, photography. So I'm able to give my gifts to my church. Nice. The serving, the helping people see who I am, what I'm capable of. Yes. And then these might be tons of women who have abilities, showing their their cooking abilities, showing their uh, tender, tender loving care with children and all these other cool things. And Mm. that helps me realize, wow, this person's really funny. This Mm. person's really cool. Mm -hmm. Wow, we my church we had camping retreats. So we go out camping. There's a we have a campground called Camp Kalakwa uh, up in Georgia, I believe. And we would go see people in these different scenarios where it's like, what would you do when we don't have power and outlets and stuff? And my wife was there for a couple of retreats. So I got to see her. In these situations, and it's it was great. Wow! Yeah. So you got to know her before got you to got know to know her. Yes. See, yeah. that's nice. I, I don't feel like there's enough of that mm-hmm. anymore, yeah. right? The the wow camping that's really cool. Yeah, that's really cool. I don't even remember where I was going with that. That's I think that's really cool. Mm-hmm. All right. So yeah. yeah, getting to know someone. Oh, church. So let's not say that everybody at the church is good, right? Mm-hmm. Um. Because I did date a guy that played the piano at a church I used to go to. Not that same church, a different one. And, uh, you know, I was like, oh, he played piano at the church. So obviously he loves the door, doing good things. Da, 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 da. He vetted. <laughs> no? <laughs> no, sir. Okay. My man was producing for every oh, uh, no. drunk rapper in Miami. Oh. And I was just like, uh, uh. Yeah. Mm, can't sign on to that no it wasn't my deal you yeah. know living that life right and i was just like is this the same man as up on sunday on the, on the stage you know they need to do better vetting out yeah. here what is this right and so um yeah i 
for anyone that's listening, do your own vetting. Even if they come well recommended, even if you met them at church, even if you met them at the networking thing, even if it was your cousins, friends, puppies, husbands, dogs, brother, um, even if your friend knew them for 27 years, mm-hmm. do your own vetting. Sometimes we we pass the okay with people because of who they come through. Mm. But understand, none of these people know them romantically. Yeah. Unless it's an ex-wife that's referring you, then then you could probably probably say, okay, I could trust that one. Yeah. But everybody behind closed doors is just a little bit different mm-hmm. with their spouse, yeah. with their significant other. And I have been with amazing men that have, I don't like the word I have been with. Let's try that again. So I have dated amazing men who in the public eye have been perfect, saints, volunteers, leaders, all the things, great orators, all the things, but behind closed doors, cheaters, liars, mm-hmm. stank. Yeah. Right? And it's just like... Yeah, I have a... Due to my um, photography skills, I've gotten friends with a lot of these models. Mm-hmm. And like, Gil, it's tough out here. Can you hook me up with one of your friends? And I'm like, yes, I have a homeboy. I've known him since XYZ. We've been to Timbuktu together. Great. You know, I'm going to do a game night. It's going to be great. You could meet and greet. They get together and it, you come to find out, like you said, I know him platonically as a brother, mm. as a friend. I do not know him romantically. And you end up uncovering things in, uh, oh, wow, he's not a good person. I don't want him around me <laughs> anymore. <laughs> and it ends up happening to the point where my wife says, you can't refer somebody that you don't really really know intimately yeah so you can say hey become a friend with him and then get to know him on that level Mm -hmm. and if they want to move on cool but as far as like hooking them up yeah no 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 listen so for our live event right gil we do a live event in october wanted woman live and it's curated to pour into professional women around self-love vetting love and how do you thrive in love right Kind of like CEUs for your love life. And um, it's a beautiful event. But one of the things I always get questioned is, are you going to provide men there? Ooh, wow. Like, like, <laughs> am I going to go shopping <laughs> and just, you know, pull up a silver platter yeah. and like pop up the men? Yeah. And I started to think about it, right? Like, well, maybe. And I'm like, okay, if 100 women come, how am I supposed to find 100 matching men mm-hmm. for this event? And you know what that's going to be? Well, Coach Cass vetted them. Right. I met them at Coach Cass's event. Yeah. And if that sucker goes south, well, Coach Cass, the one that brought this man to me, <laughs> it wasn't Jesus. It was Coach Cass. Yeah. No, no, no. This I am a certified matchmaker, but I got out of that because I realized that you could be your own matchmaker. You just have to tweak a few things, starting with your small talk, starting with your socializing, starting with how you connect in a positive light. Hill Harper talks about being a light. People are attracted to light. So are those termites at my house, right? <laughs> <laughs> little salty, Gil. Little salty. <laughs> These daggone termites, yeah. right? That's just all up around the light. Hallelujah. So we, <laughs> yeah. we just want to think about the beginning steps mm. and not the whole staircase, right? MLK. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Faith is taking the first step even when you can't see the whole staircase. Yeah. St- staircase. Yeah. I like what you said before on the previous episode, you talked about adjusting and fixing your picker. Mm -hmm. And I feel like one of the picker knobs, I see it as like a doohickey. Mm -hmm. Talking and small talk is a part of that. It's like one of the first steps. And in vetting and learning how to vet men, small talk is where it starts. Yeah. Like you you have to be able to have a conversation with this person. If you are on the same intellectual playing field, Maybe that's okay. He doesn't have all the degrees. You probably don't have all the degrees and he does. Maybe you guys are aligned in another level. Oh, yeah. you guys aren't aligned spiritually. You guys don't have the same spiritual family values. Well, I don't think this person is going to be a good fit for you. And that's all about understanding and acknowledging your picker, like you said before. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's not a game. Yeah. I I really feel that majority of single women, their picker is broken. Mm-hmm. And it's based on their past traumas or in opposition to their past traumas. Yeah. So they continue to choose what they don't want, or they choose the total opposite, which they don't want either, and they end up with something, yeah. which is just settling. Mm-hmm. And I really want to help women stop settling. 
But in order to stop settling, we got to be able to talk. Yeah. Got to be able to strike up conversation. And you could always start out very simply like one of our last episodes, um, I think with Dr. Tasha, you know, you, you give a compliment. Very simply. Hey, that color goes great with your skin tone. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> right? You know, yeah. it, it just makes you feel kind of yeah. good. Like mm-hmm. when you told me about my blue, I was like, yeah, this okay. blue is... Pink. Well, blue's my favorite color. Is it? Yeah, it is. See, this is good to know. Yeah. And see, this is where we would start to take the notes. Mm. We talked about that in the last yeah. the last uh, episode, right? Dated yeah. multiple men. You take that note. Okay, so Gil loves the color blue. Yeah. Come on. That's it. Here for it. That's yeah. it. So we want to start thinking about what's important to us. Mm-hmm. Getting the love deck to help us ask those questions, dive deeper, and then really curate some of these scenarios and questions to what we think is important. Yeah. So we could really weed out what we want, mm-hmm. what we don't want. Yeah, that's it. And either way, it has no bearing on us being a wanted woman. Mm-hmm. Period. That's it. That's it. So hopefully today's episode has really helped you to hone in on where your fear of small talk and socializing has come from. Is it your fear of awkwardness, fear of rejection, fear of judgment? What are these fears that have come up for you? And how can you start to face those fears, face those feelings, to really experience the fullness of what love can be for you? I pray this has been a blessing. Please hit share down below. Hit the notification button so you don't miss out. Share this with a friend, please, and thank you. Any friend that you know suffers and is like, oh, small talk, I don't know if I could do that. I want you to go ahead and hit the share button right now. Comment down below. Comment. Let me know what you got from this episode, what you loved, and maybe what you want to hear on the next episode, okay? In the meantime, in between time, I'm Coach Cass, America's go-to love doctor. Keep loving, keep laughing, keep living. So we are trying out the love deck. So let's just do random. I like this one. I like that. Mm-hmm. I knew I, that one. I. <laughs> one and woman love deck. Y'all, this about to be good. So we played with these ones already, and they were good. They was like right on the money. They was good. On one side, it has affirmations. On the other side, it has like a question. So we got to answer the question. So he going to read the affirmation part. And then on the other side, it's going to have a question. The affirmation part is I embrace. (laughs) That's a good one. I have these wanted woman cards from Coach Cass, our good dear friend. And she made these... uh, Wanted woman cards, and I am a wanted woman by you. <laughs> Let's get that right. Right, yeah. right. So <laughs> we're gonna read. It's like a little question and an answer. Okay. All right. Sounds so good. this is one of her cards. It says, "What is your favorite family tradition?" Our family tradition, our favorite family tradition, is to go to church on Sunday. That's true. What is your favorite dance move? <laughs> my favorite, like right now, my favorite dance move? Yeah, yeah. All right. Let's see. Okay. Show me what you're working with. All right, let me show you. All right. Ow! Ow! Yeah! That is the favorite. Oh, that's the favorite. You've been seeing this right? Like, Ow! <laughs> so, yeah, you, you probably have. Yeah, that was yeah. the move that caught your attention. What you talking about? <laughs>